Hi, this is Binod Suman. In this video, we are going to talk what is the Zookeeper, why we should use the Zookeeper, how to use the Zookeeper, and how the Zookeeper is going to help to solve many very much important enterprises use case in all the distribution environment. So uh, this would be the series of the videos on the Zookeeper, might be five or six videos. So I will cover the fundamental of the Zookeeper, the installation part of the Zookeeper, standalone applications, standalone uh, installation, and the cluster-based installations, then the client for the Zookeeper. Then I will show some Java code, how to interact with the assemble of the Zookeeper. And then after that, we will be trying to solve each use cases with the help of the Zookeeper. So for the time being, forget about everything about the Zookeeper. Uh, let us focus on one use case, one problem statement. So we have suppose thousand tasks. That task could be anything. Uh, that could be the printer job or the email sending or any computation tasks. And those tasks are saved on database and they have the number one, two, three, four, two thousand. And these tasks, we have to complete these tasks in one hour time. So what you will do, you will take these tasks and give these tasks to the one node, one virtual machine and the one desktop. And this desktop will take the data, tasks from the database and they will do the computation or the uh, predefined executions for the tasks. Then you observe this task is taking the four hour times. Then what you will do to perform these tasks in one hour time? So you will add some more node. So suppose you add some more node. So if I add the four node, then each node will take the one one hour time and then you complete your job in the four hour times, right? And this is called the distributed system. So when you engage more than one node to perform your bigger tasks, that is called the distributed system. Means now I distributed the work into the multiple nodes, right? And this is also called the horizontal scaling. Means tomorrow, if I want to perform this task in half hours, so I will add four more nodes, right, to perform these operations. And your job is done, right? But do you think it will work? It will not work. Because when you will use the four nodes to perform these tasks, this, ta this node might be fetch the job from 200 sequence to the 600 sequence. This node might be take from the 500 to 700 sequence row number. This task from 50 to the 375 row number. And this task might be 400 to the 800 row number. So you can see they are picking the duplicate work. So a lot of duplicate work is happening there. So here also from 2 to 400, 500 to 600, right? A lot of duplicates work is going to buy the pickup by the different things and some of the tasks if you see from 800 to the thousand no node has been picked up those things so then this mechanism will not work so because they are not talking to each other they are there is no any collaboration among this system so what will you do to make the collaboration system so we will make one collaboration service And all the node will connect with this node. Right? We can see these are the worker node, right? And all the worker node to connect the collaboration system. And then this collaboration system, we say, okay, hey, node number one, suppose this is node number one, two, three. 
Hey, node number one, you will pick up from one to two fifty. Node number two, you will pick up from two fifty one to five hundred, and you will pick up from one five hundred to seven fifty, and this node will pick up from the seven fifty one to the thousand because some coordination system is there. Then you can say your design is perfectly fine, and all the work of node will finish the complete work in one hour, right? And this coordinate this. Coordination circuit is nothing. This is the zookeeper. But how this zookeeper is maintaining all the collaboration informations? How they will know how many systems are there? So suppose tomorrow, if one more system is going to up, right? Then again, this frequency would be changed, right? If one more will become, then this number will be changed. Now this number will be from one to two hundred, and this from the two hundred one to the four hundred, and this one will be from eight hundred one to the thousand. And could be possibility if one system is down also. Then again they have to do the rebalancing, right? So they have to do the rebalancing. So how this all these things is done by the zookeeper? The one important thing in the zookeeper, and that is called the Z node. So Z node, uh, we will have the one separate video on the Z node. It is also called the data model for the zookeeper. So uh, this is kind of the Unix five system. Uh, the same tree structures, right? Tree structure five system. So you have the uh, and suppose this is the one node, another node, another node, right? This kind of the five structures we can have in the J node. So each node we have the two information. Actually, this is the K value pair, K and value they store. So each node. Store one value. What are the value you will give? And second information there is the children information. So suppose this is node A, B, C, D, E. So A has the two children. B does not have any children, and C uh, have the two children, right? And they also keep maintain of the version system, version E. So suppose you keep the value for this A node is B node. So put the version number one. If you update this one to the YouTube, version number would be changed. So this information is stored by the J node, and we have the different type of the J node. That is the important thing. Okay. So let me show you what are the different type of the J node. Anyhow, we have the bigger video on that, but for the time being, just I am telling you. So one is called the persistent uh, J node. Second is called the ephemeral J node. Third is the sequential persistent J node. Fourth is the sequential ephemeral J node. And fifth one is the TTL J node. So this TTL J node is only available. A uh, zookeeper version from 3.5. Then you will have the a new node. This is called the TTL node. Let me give the one very basic thing. So persist node node is the once you create a node, persistent node, it will be always there in the system. It will not delete until unless you go and delete that the information. Second is called the ephemeral node. Ephemeral node is if any worker node. If this worker node create one ephemeral node, and this worker node is down or dead, then those ephemeral node automatically deleted. So the it will be there till worker node arrive, by which this node has been created. Sequence is very important thing. Sequence means when you create one node. It will automatically append some number. So suppose you create one node A, and that is a sequence here. Automatically, zookeeper will add one suffix, some sequence number. We will discuss all those things. 
and the same difference persistent in integer ttl is the time to leave node means suppose you create one node and you give the ttl is the 4 second so within the 4 second it will automatically delete so this integer node will till the vocal node is running this ttl node till that time is there whatever time you have given that and that ttl could be the persistent that ttl could be the inferior that will be discussed that and all the use case whatever you are seeing here the behind this is the magic of the j node to uh, to make the design of all the use cases with the help of the j node we will uh, you will solve all the use cases here right so this is the j node so if you see here the explain i explain you it was the resource sharing right i took one task and i distributed i we are sharing the resource to perform this task so that's why this use case is called the distributed resource sharing but sometime you find out the some use case that only one system among all the worker node only one system show that operation to avoid any kind of the things we will discuss that use case if that scenario is there so that job should not be distributed only one system should be perform that task so which system will perform that task right so then you have to choose the reader right so this is my reader and they will do that job so how those reader selection should be there then you can see that right distributed monitoring means how many system is up how many system are down because everything is collaborated with the zookeeper you can easily see we can easily monitor that how many worker nodes are connected with the zookeeper and how many are disconnected so there are the many use case that we will see one by one that but in the complete diagram you can see any problem here yes if this system is down single point of view right if this collaboration service is down then everything is down right then all your use cases will go in the toss but it, but it is not the case because zookeeper itself is a distributed system so for your uh, uh, practice purpose for your local practice purpose you can install one node zookeeper server that is called the stand alone but it will not work in the production system right production system you should have the distributed zookeeper so second option is that you can have the n node zookeeper server and we can make the assemble means the uh, zookeeper cluster so we we'll see in the next video how to install the stand alone zookeeper server and how to make the cluster of the zookeeper server right so if you see the diagram actually this is the assembler so we have the multiple zookeeper server right and uh, suppose this is the five node zookeeper server to make the cluster so out of that one node they choose as a reader and another node they mark as the followers okay and once any data suppose you create some j node that request is always come to the reader even though that request come to the flower but they will transfer to the reader so all the right operation all the right operations is done by the reader and then reader sync those information to all the flowers with the help of the broadcasting so we have the one uh, protocol that is called the zoo keeper atomic broadcast protocol with the help of this protocol they connect with all the flower node and they update the data but for the right operation but for the read operation suppose right operation only done by the reader but if you have the read operation that would be performed by 
any vocal note or the reader note. So we see in the next video how to install into all those things. And then to connect, this is your this is your Zookeeper cluster. Zookeeper cluster. So you can connect the Zookeeper cluster with Zookeeper client that each and everything we will see in the next video and then you can connect it also with the help of the java code we can connect it so all those things this is just a fundamental things but uh, in the next video i am going to installation part and then you can move to solve one or the use cases one by one right uh, that's it for this video uh, please watch all the videos and you will have a very good understanding on the zookeeper. Uh, thank you very much.